Hello everyone and welcome to this new YouTube video series. If you follow my uh, previous videos, a um, few months back, five months ago, I built uh, this POC for an AI that expands its features by building its own source code. Um, I have some, I had some major calls of things I wanted to try with AI and building its own source code was one of them. So I built this uh, proof of concept and I think it was quite successful and there are, thing, there are still things I wanted to explore more but I decided to just pause it for a while and one of my other calls that I wanted to try was to replicate the faculties of a mind, a human mind and one of the things that was stopping me from picking up that project was the part of how memories would work so at the time my idea was to and I had this working also with this project here. Uh, during the conversation with the AI within the chat, the AI would always identify the main topics that were part of the current discussion. So if you're this, if I would say something like I really enjoy playing football, the AI would identify topics as maybe personal life, uh, fun, hobbies, entertainment, something like that. So when the AI picked up a thought that should be memorized for the future as part of its knowledge base, then it would associate the current text to that thought. Now, later, if you're having a discussion about uh, hobbies, for example, then it would use the hobbies tag to fetch related thoughts that were previously stored and bring those thoughts back. Um, so this worked but it had some uh, very significant drawbacks. Now what changed was when a few weeks ago, OpenAI released the new and improved embedding model. So text embedding ADA002 replaced five separate models for text search, text similarity, etc. And outperforms the most capable model of each at most tasks while being priced 99.8% lower. So this was really significant because now it's really uh, viable to use embeddings to search for memories. So what we do is we don't need tags anymore. And, and at every thing the user says, because the cost is so low, we can actually search for uh, semantically similar previous related uh, memories and bring those up. So when OpenAI released this, I thought, okay, this is the best time now to actually pick up this project again and start to experiment, to start doing things. So that's what I started to do. I started building this artificial intelligence mind project. So let me show you the more or less what's the plan here. And I have already changed this maybe two or three times and it'll probably change more. But for now, this is more or less what I'm what I have in mind. So the main interface is, of course, the chat. That's how the user interacts. The user uh, gives some input, and the AI will um, add context and other info to it. So it will add, uh, let's say, the current date and time, the username, its own name, etc. Then it will be uh, fed uh, into an analyzer module. This analyzer will extract the intention. So what is the user asking me? What is my purpose? Uh, what should I do with this input? After that, we will then add the relevant memories from the past. So using the embeddings, we will inject into that uh, whole context uh, facts about things that AI memorized in the past. Then this will go to another module if needed. So if there is a need for developing or kind of expanding that thought process, then this goes to a background task. And I'll explain you in a minute why a background task. Then after that, we generate the output to the user. It goes to a summarizer. Uh, the summarizer means a kind of a short term memory. So the current uh, conversation is always summarized and that summary is kept to be injected into the next prompt. So the, the AI always knows uh, what is, what's the conversation been about, even if we don't include all the 
individual chat messages. And then the cycle continues in the loop. So when a thought needs to be expanded, um, let's say I make a question, the AI gives me an answer right away, but at the same time it says, hmm, maybe I should develop this more. Maybe I should come up with more ideas. Maybe the user is really interested in this, so I should uh, help him in some other way. So in those cases, this goes to this thinker uh, component, which is a background task. It will combine the intention, the context, the input, its own knowledge, and uh, using uh, the AI uh, GPT module models, it will develop and expand those thoughts into more thoughts. And then when something, when the new output is, is achieved, it is fed back into the cycle and the new output is given to the user. So this is more or less the idea that I have here. Now I started building this, um, which is actually not just an interface for the chat, but is actually, let's say, like a toolbox for developing the, the AR mind itself. So I started building like a small platform with different components to help me debug, to help me test things, to try things, to see how the different parts are working. And then of course there is chat to actually do the, the real testing. But that part is still a bit uh, too early to show, but let me show you more or less what I have so far. So first I have an option screen where I can tune up different values for different options, things that go to OpenAI like the temperature, uh, but then also thresholds on how I select the memories, scoring, etc, etc. Um, and very important, I have a way to select models that are being used for each component. So I have all the models available and I can pick up and select the right ones. This will, will be very important because fine tuning will be extremely relevant here. Uh, I haven't developed that part yet, but there will be a module for continuous fine tuning. And uh, I will show this in the next video together with the chat part. So there is a really important aspect of this is to be able to tune the answers and tune the metadata that the AI extracts and being able to use that to generate fine tuned data, fine tune it and feed it back as a new model to be used again. So this will be a continuous um, iteration to improve in, in the model. And then I have just for debugging, I have a logs which helps me see the model that was being, uh, that was calling OpenAI, the input or like the prompt and the output that was given back. So this, this is just for me to test things and make sure everything is working as expected. If the, if the variables are being injected properly into the prompts, etc., etc. Um, this was the first one I've developed. This was a very simple test to check the, the new embeddings model. I wanted to see, understand the scoring on the similarities. So let me give you an example. If I say um, Mount Everest is the highest place on Earth. And then I want to compare this with, tell me what is the highest place on Earth. And I'll click compare. And we have a score of 0.89, which is uh, quite high. Now, if I change this to something different, but which means the same, so the semantic similarity is there, the score should be equally high. So let's do a completely different sentence. Uh, let's make this a question. Can you tell me what is the tallest mountain? on our planet. So I'm using completely different words here from from this and let's see what score we get. 0 0.86 which is still quite high. So if this is how the I test more or less how the scoring works um, because when you apply the cosine similarity for these embeddings it really shifts to the positive and this is an, a known issue and so we need to understand what is the threshold of what is a good score and a bad score. So this is where I make a lot of tests. Then I have this fact checked, fact check. So it, this is for uh, a first trial on fetching memories. So I, load, I loaded this um, 
platform with some random facts not not random but just uh, various things that uh, came to my mind and one uh, some of them i added were about the recent world cup so if i ask uh who won the 2022 fifa world cup and i click compare this is going to fetch all the memories that are related with this so I know that the uh, FIFA Football World Cup tournament happens every four years. The most recent one was in 2022. Uh, the final of the fast, last Football World Cup was between France and Argentina. Argentina won. So I have a lot of memories that are related with this. Again, they are fetched by the semantic similarity using the embeddings. So you see here some scoring. And now based on this, I would get an answer. So this, this is like... Uh, a demonstration of the process that the chat will be doing automatically this is a, like a step-by-step -step thing so now if i press answer i'm going to use this to generate an answer okay now let's make something a little bit more complex let's ask uh, in which football club plays this year's world cup top scorer so this is a quite more advanced question because here i don't have memories that give me the answer right away i know that uh, messi plays in psg i know that mbappe plays in psg i have a separate memory that says the golden boot was awarded to mbappe with eight goals uh, i have some more things about the world cup so but now i'm asking uh it needs to go to one memory to know who is the top scorer then use that to know in which football club does it play. So now let's try and get an answer. And there we, have, there we go. Mbappe currently plays in Paris Saint-Germain football club, which is correct. So, okay, so this is the first demonstration how, how the logic will be uh, more or less uh, working. And then uh, we have the chat, which I'm currently working on. Uh, there's a lot of things here that i'm going to explain in the next video because i don't want to make these videos too long there's a lot of things uh here already that will be uh, very very useful for developing this but i'll show this in the next video uh, i hope you liked it i hope it's interesting and uh, the reason i'm making these videos is just to share information to build in public um, it's not about building in public in a live stream coding sort of way because that's not my style of working but I'm interested in frequently doing these videos, maybe once a week, to share progress, share new features, talk about the technical challenges or the AI challenges, how I'm solving things in, in, in the background. And of course, uh, one advantage is also to get feedback from people who are most, much smarter than me and can give me suggestions, ideas as well. So if this is something interesting to you, make sure to follow along and I'll publish a new video soon. Bye-bye.